Hi there, welcome to an Applications of Series video on superannuation. Superannuation, let's have a look at an example. This will tell us uh, the most about superannuation, how we attack these questions. $4,000 is invested into a superannuation account at the start of each year. The account earns 8% interest per annum compounded annually, compounded yearly. And we need to find the value of the account overall after 20 years. Okay, so the first amount, $4,000 is put in at the beginning of that first year and it earns 8% per annum compounding annually or yearly for 20 years. So that's a bit like a compound interest question, but we're going to have some more things added to it, obviously. At the beginning of the second year, there's the second amount that starts up another $4,000 attracting the same interest rate. You notice that only compounds for 19 years, so that's a bit different. And the third amount, another $4,000 injected into the account. It attracts the same interest rate, compounds each year, but only for 18 years. And that continues until we get a final amount. The 20th amount will be the final $4,000 uh, invested at the beginning of the final year. And uh, it attracts 8% per annum it actually technically doesn't compound so we'll kind of could cross that word out there but it does attract 8% uh, return for that one year but it uh, doesn't get enough time to compound that last one but so let's get technical there <laughs> so uh, we've got 20 amounts altogether I just didn't bother doing the amount uh, 4 through to 19 we'd be here there for a while and you'd get sick of this video so uh, let's see how we attack this each of those amounts need to be calculated using the compound interest formula so um, there's our compound interest formula the amount in the account equals P which is your principal the amount of money you're investing outside of 1 plus R R stands for the interest rate and to the power of n and n stands for the number of time periods I'm sure you're pretty familiar with the compound interest formula by now so we'll apply that compound interest formula to each of those amounts we described on each of those lines that first amount four thousand dollars will be our P for principal um, so that will be into here four thousand dollars will go into there can you see our interest rate that's pretty obvious eight percent that'll go in there now I'll turn that eight percent into naught point naught eight it's always uh, handy to work with decimals for interest rates in these sorts of questions and the time periods are uh, 20 years I think uh, each of those items is fairly obvious there so we'll turn that into this uh, amount one four thousand dollars is the principal now you'll notice we've can combine the one and the 0.08 to represent a growth of 8% each time and the time periods go up the top as our power or indice. The second amount, uh, very similar, it, all the numbers go in except you notice it's only compounding for 19 time periods so that's the only real change in the numbers so once you know how to substitute in once uh, there's only a slight variation there for 18 years same sort of following that compound interest formula again and this time we're only compounding for 18 years now that would continue but it would get boring so we'd, uh, we'll continue we'll cut to the chase here and have a look at that final amount that 20th amount it would um, be only in the account for one year and uh, we have a power of one there indicating that it's only in there for one year not really compounding that last one as we said okay so let's add up all those amounts we'll have a look over in this section over here we'll add up all those amounts and we should be able to get the final value in the account so we take our 4000 outside of 1 plus 0 8 to the 20 and we add it to our 4000 outside of 1.08 to the 19 etc and we'll just write that down there and the dot dot dots right through to the final amount there okay now how do we rearrange that that's our basic working I suppose for this the total of all those little amounts that in attract 8% uh, interest okay we've got that up there now we do have a couple of things to simplify here first step is we well next step is to factorize out the 4000 out of each of these items you'll notice 4000 is common there because that's the principle that we applied each time we injected four thousand dollars at the beginning of each year so we can take that out as our common factor and when we do we are just left with the brackets and the powers each time okay so 4,000 is taken out and it makes it a bit simpler there 
And an interesting thing happens if we reverse the order of the items in the brackets there, we might recognize something about it. So let's just turn those around. We've just taken the 1.08 to the 1 and stuck it out the front. And uh, we're imagining that the next one would be to the 2, to the 3, and we'll call this one our final amount over here and we'll put it at the, uh, at the end. So um, we've done that so we recognize that that bracket, where I've um, just put a border around it there, that section is actually a geometric progression with our first term of 1.08 to the power of 1, which we kind of don't need to write in, and uh, our r, our common ratio, to get from one term to the other is 1.08 because the only thing that's changed from that first term to get to the second term is the power. So 1.08 must have been times by the previous term to get those uh, indices uh, just adding up there. And the number of time periods is 20. So we're going to use that because we're pretty good, well, hopefully we'll be pretty practiced at uh, finding the sum uh, sum to end terms of a GP. So it'll help us add up all those amounts in this superannuation account. So let's find the sum of this GP. Now here's our formula. Sn equals A outside of R to the N minus 1 over R minus 1. Now we've got our A, our R and our N. So it's just a substitution situation. It's not easy to say. Uh, 4,000 is the 4,000 that's out the front here, so we'll just carry that down here. We want the total in the account, so that's part of it. But this, here's our sum to end terms of our brackets. Now we've got our A, we've got our R, we've got our N, we've got everything we need. So we'll just carefully put all those numbers in the right spots. I won't bore you with the substitutions. Well, actually, I'll do lots of arrows around here because I feel like it. A is 1.08. It's going to look like spaghetti soon. R is 1.08. Our n is 20, uh, our minus 1 is in the formula, this bottom 1.08 is from our r again, so we're just substituting them in the right spots and being careful on our calculator, and we will end up with a total value of $183,047.86, pretty precise, I think we've rounded off to the nearest cent there anyway. And because we were asked the question in a sentence, we will be polite and uh, answer in sentence form. So we have uh, arranged each of those items according to the compound interest formula. We've then factorized out the 4,000. We've then reversed the order of the bracket items to recognize that it's a geometrical progression. And then we've found the sum to end terms of that geometrical progression. I'm not saying these are easy questions, but each part, if you're sensible and careful with it, isn't too bad mathematically, so I'm hoping that you are encouraged to try these questions if you haven't before. Now, there's a couple of variations. I've picked a nice, easy example, well, <laughs> fairly straightforward example here, because it's compounding annually. So this is your standard question, if you like, for superannuation, for the superannuation topic. Let's have a look at a couple of variations that you may be uh, confronted with. So we can be asked uh, to s answer a question on superannuation where the interest rate is applied and compounded monthly. So the two adjustments we need to make there are as follows. We need to divide the annual interest rate that we might be given in the question by 12 so that we've got a monthly interest rate. And we also need to multiply the number of time periods by 12 because if it's compounding monthly there will be that compounding um, interest rate will be applied 12 times each year. So uh, always, whenever we vary these things for compounding differently than annually we have to make two adjustments one on the interest rate and one on the number of time periods. Sometimes we're asked to answer a question where the interest rate is applied and compounded quarterly, so we will have to adjust by dividing the annual interest rate by 4 and multiplying the number of time periods by 4. Notice in those two situations that uh, the number 12 is there for the monthly, the number 4 is there for the quarterly, So, and, and th those numbers are the same each time, it's just uh, in one case we're dividing and in another case we're multiplying. If we're compounding every six months, sometimes some uh, textbooks have the word biannually, which uh, is a bit confusing. Sometimes that uh, some people think that means it's compounding every second year, but um, anyway, every six months clears it up. <laughs> and uh, the adjustments we need there are to divide the annual interest rate by two 
because every six months that uh, there'll be half the interest, the annual interest applied, and we will have to multiply the number of time periods by two. And once again, that number's the same for both. It's just in one case we're dividing, in the other case we're multiplying. So once you make those adjustments um, to the interest rate and the number of time periods, and if you put them in the right spots in our working, the working works out very, very similarly. There's no other real adjustments that are needed. But um, in e each of these questions, I would desperately look for the word compounding and see what name comes after it, what word comes after it, because you have to base your question, you're working out on that compounding time period and make those uh, specific adjustments. So, um, so uh, you might get a straightforward question where it's just annual interest rate, but I doubt it. Uh, they like to see, the markers like to see that you can respond to these variations. So I'm hoping that helps. Get plenty of practice on those and um, see you next time for some other videos. Plenty of videos already on peterblakemaths.com. All the best with your studies.